transactions, including all charges, does not leave room for hidden charges. Ami Ben Sura, a legal expert, explained that the most common forms of interest, otherwise called pledge, include tangible assets, non-possessory security rights, assignment of security rights in intangible assets, and use title for security purposes. Commenting on the outcomes of the recommendations of the document, lawyer Ben Suda had this to say. The outcome would be the law and the regulations, and they are based on UNCTRA recommendations. This is the UN Commission for International Trade um, um, that, has, that routinely looks at commercial laws and commercial frame instruments and develops them. So, um, to, to, the, to a large extent, um, we incorporated the recommendations of UNCTRA and also the World Bank recommendations on the establishment and operations of a collateral registry. But of course, Gambia is a small jurisdiction. We had to substantially um, really uh, um, try to uh, fit whatever the recommendations are in our, in our context so that it, it's relevant. A team of consultants from Alpha XP, a US-based consulting firm, explains the underlying principle behind their involvement in this validation. What we contribute to the current uh, project is we brought the latest and greatest technologies. Uh, our system is uh, based on the latest version of uh, SQL Server as a database and uh, ASP.NET uh, 4.5 version, which is currently is latest. Uh, it's all Microsoft-based solution. It's web-based. And uh, due to its web-based nature, it will be available from anywhere where there is an internet. So imagine you are somewhere in a rural area of your country or you are abroad, you will be able to access the business registration system as well as uh, the collateral registry. The participants opined that if this 45-page security interest in movable property bill document is approved, it will address access to finance issues in the business sectors in general. Samuel Ba, GRTS. Gambian business operators who have been shifting from one business to the other due to the vagaries of meaningful businesses are now beginning to turn their attention to the booming internet business. As part of our series of how information communication technology is changing the lives of the people, Ibrahim Valley takes a closer look on the encouraging story of one indigenous Gambian who has been in the business for nearly two decades. It's growing time for Lamin Koli, a business executive trying to establish a niche for himself in the information, communication, and technology industry. Like the vagaries of the weather, business executives will tell you that the market keeps on shifting. Sometimes it's unpredictable, says Lamin. Barely seven years ago, he stopped the telecenter business. This was partly due to the conducive environment created by government, which spurred the private sector to actualize their ICT dreams. This boot reminiscence of the telecenter era has since been replaced with these computers. If this thing doesn't work, you have to try. You have to be focused and look into something that you are doing. You know, you still have to gather the people together, not not for them to go. Because even even when in the um, on the internet side that you are seeing, things are still going. You still even even on the internet, you still have cheap calls. You look at the Skype. You look at the voice over. I, uh, IP. So all these things, they have a lot of facilities that will cost you nothing. In the past, he used to fill this tree with mobile phones. Now, Lamin explained to me that he had to stop this business because the odds were against him. What we realize is the pound is too, you know, it is high, the rate is high. So you bring something from England, if you convert it to the dollar sea, and when other people are selling it at low prices, you know, but what, the, the materials that we bring before, they are quality ones. Definitely they are quality ones from UK. So now you see people are going to China bringing these things. So I decided just to concentrate on the internet and other things. Than Football video club business seems to be working out well for some operators. The modern technology is fast and easier for us. So here we can watch at least three to four different matches at a time due to the advance of the technology. Uh, being present here. So if you see uh, the difference between Gambia and other countries here, uh, we have access to this satellite than many parts of these uh, West African countries. Because in the Gambia, it's easier for us to uh, get uh, Al Jazeera easily, for us to get uh, Supersport easily, 
you know, understand? And then uh, with so many different channels. The Gambia is moving with the changing trends in the sophisticated ICT revolution. And for others, these are tips for anyone willing to invest in this industry. Ibrahim Abalde, GRTS News. Coming up in the international news, we find out why a suspected U.S. drone strike in Yemen is causing anger among residents who accuse the Americans of killing civilians and damaging infrastructure. And the situation in northern Mali hands in the balance with an estimated 300,000 civilians displaced. We'll be back with these and other stories after this. If you were searching for... You can visit us at our state-of-the-art banking hall headquarters at number 50 Keraba Avenue or call 4399-144 or 437-8489. We have various branches and implants within the greater Banjul area and throughout the length and breadth of the country. The branches are Tabokoto, London Corner, Kau Junction, Pakote, Brikama Nyambai, Brikama Haulakunda, Bansang, Soma, Farafene, Bara, Basse Highway, Basse Santusu, and Fatoto. All in all, we have 41 branches just for your financial convenience. At FIG, we have seven mediums through which you can send and receive money worldwide. MoneyGram, Money Express, Connection Express, Lee Direct, Western Union, Ria, and Wadi. Don't just send and receive. FIG it. Welcome back. Fighting between Malian government soldiers backed by France and Islamist rebels has displaced over 370,000 civilians. With many spreading camps inside Mali, conditions inside the camps are terribly bad, with many of the displaced surviving on food rations given by the World Food Program. The crisis, as we hear in this report, has also affected the education of thousands of children who are forced to flee with their parents. A house in Mopti in central Mali is home to seven families, 32 people in all. Two weeks ago, these women fled their village near Timbuktu to escape possible fighting between Islamist rebels and French forces. We left Raus on a small barge. The trip lasted four days, and during all that time we had nothing to eat. We fled the war on the Islamists to find peace here, but life without a home is hard, and we can't always find enough to eat. The women do their best to survive by collecting sand from the roadside during the rice harvest and sifting out grains of rice that have fallen off passing trucks. The school in Savari has taken on some 300 extra students in the last few months. They and their families fled battles in Timbuktu, Gao and Kidal. Twice a day, the children queue for a meal provided by the United Nations World Food Program. The WFP distributes food at many schools in central Mali. Although the children are able to be fed and taught, their numbers have placed a tremendous burden on teachers. After decades of effort to improve education, there was a growing sense of futility. It's a step back, a loss of 10 or 20 years. All the progress that we have seen in these last years, as far as access, quality and infrastructure are concerned, well, this war has destroyed all that. The children are among 40,000 displaced Malians living in camps outside Sevare and Moti. According to official figures, the war has driven more than 370,000 Malians from their homes. In Nigeria, suspected militants have sought and killed three health workers in the north of the country. Authorities suspect the attack to be the work of Boko Haram. Also in Mali, soldiers have killed a suicide bomber who detonated explosives at a checkpoint in the city of Gao, the second attack on the same checkpoint in two days. And in Guinea-Bissau, a children's festival has opened in the capital to celebrate regional integration and cultural diversity. We have more on those stories and others in this round -up. On Saturday in Nigeria, gunmen shot dead nine health workers in two separate attacks in the northern city of Kano. The health workers were administering polio vaccines. I saw three gunmen enter the clinic in the morning, then I heard gunshots, and then I saw the three gunmen run out and disappear. No one has claimed responsibility for the attack, but authorities suspect the Islamist group Boko Haram. The Boko Haram sect opposes the polio vaccination campaign and says it is a Western conspiracy to infect Muslims with AIDS.